What do I really mean by the Helger Way? Well, before I tell you about this, let, let me tell you that I am, if nothing else, a passionate teacher. As an architect, contractor, and advisor to numerous clients, public and private, I have learned the value of communication, be it oral, written, graphic, or body language, and how it can both enrich and imperil a project, and more importantly, a relationship. As a teacher and mentor of employees and students, I am passionate about nurturing communication skills. Some would even say evangelical. Indeed, a survey conducted in 2010 of our local industry revealed that good communication skills are paramount to an employer. So the mandate to teach communication skills in this class, and indeed across our entire curriculum, is well placed. Many of you will not be comfortable at first with the many tricks I will play on you to improve your communication skills, but I ask your patience and willingness to shed your inhibitions for a moment and strive to reach for a higher rung. Consider this class a communication laboratory where each of you will speak passionately about a topic dear to you, will hopefully speak equally passionately about a construction-related topic, and through the often funny but powerful tool of the five-minute photo exercise, learn merely to get comfortable with who you are and with speaking to an audience. I will coach you and encourage you and ask that you also coach and encourage your classmates as they struggle with you. We have had some very powerful passion speeches over the years. It has for some become a tonic, a means to express a deep thought or conviction in front of peers. Respect the presentations as an opportunity for self-awareness, yours and the speakers. For imagine listening to the first-time confession of a personal failure and recovery from addiction, or the surprise ending to a beautiful, almost poetic presentation revealing the loss of a child, or the passionately funny tale of loneliness as a child with but only an imaginary friend leading to found love through common quirks or the riveting tale of growing up and breaking away from a cult. Imagine the passion these actual topics can evoke. Indeed, many will be instructive, funny, and even familiar, but they truly are a window into the person and personality that is your classmates. So why do I do these passion speeches as students have come to know them? Very simply put, it will become evident how differently we speak when we are passionate about a topic or merely just have to speak. The difference is astounding. I want you each to see and recognize the difference in others and in yourselves, and there is no better way to demonstrate this. Besides, they are fun. Seek an interesting story, be creative, and be passionate about the telling. You will be tested on other forms of written communication as well ones that will definitely put you outside your comfort zone. Embrace the opportunity to stretch your comfort zones. Think for yourselves, as I will not be spoon-feeding solutions to you. On specifications, let me say this. You need to know how specifications are structured and understand their successful application to your business. They are part of your contract, so you must understand them. And to write them is to understand them. But I do not expect anyone to leave this class with ambition to become specification writers. It is a skill requiring the simultaneous understanding of technical concepts, legal implications, and constructability concerns. I hope to expose you to a level of specified awareness in this class. So what about this Hilger way of delivering assignments? Whether you submit an email or a major proposal, the only feedback you can be certain to ever receive when working within our industry is silence. Yes, stone cold silence. There is no obligation for the recipient of your communication to provide feedback, so you as the writer need to evaluate prior to submission what is needed, how it is best communicated, and what you can write that will avoid a response of stony silence. So consider this class practice for real-world experience, except that I will provide feedback both globally and individually, and often in ways you may not expect. But do not expect me to lay everything out for you in, this, in the assignment guidelines and instructions. It just doesn't happen that way in the business world. 
I give you that information which a client or stakeholder might give you, and you have to think, and I really mean think creatively, how to best handle response. We will then discuss this response in class collectively. I will challenge your responses, and it will become clear to you how you can individually change your approach. Making mistakes is not a problem. It's necessary for learning. Make mistakes in this class, and you will learn. This approach is time-tested. It may be a bit frustrating and confusing at first trying to figure out what Hilger wants. But in the end, most students understand the intent and actually recognize the value of this process in strengthening not just their writing and communicating skills, but their critical thinking skills as well. And that is my objective. So do not expect explicit guidelines or rubrics, but do expect feedback and dialogue. And you can resubmit almost any assignment to improve your results. Just look at the syllabus for resubmission information. This class has a reputation for a lot of work, and I will not dispel that rumor, but the work you put in has its demonstrated rewards. I look forward to teaching, mentoring, and coaching you this semester.